Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How's your day been? Busy. I've been doing interviews for like two hours. You're my you're my final interview. Oh of the my gosh. So you get me at my best. Oh my gosh. I'm sure you're exhausted at this point. I'm all right. I have a day off today. So we've been been on the road for a week. So day off today, but uh always good to day off. Present. Yeah, <laughs> day off kind of. Yeah. So. Sometimes those mental days, I think, are more exhausting. Right, right. Yeah. Um. So uh, album's coming out October 7th. What a smart time to bring it out with it being, you know, horror related in October. I feel like when I looked pa in the past releases, I don't think you've ever released one in October before. Uh, Close. September 26th is about the closest we did on the last one. But uh, this year... Um, you know, for me, I'm a Halloween nerd. Um, <laughs> Obviously, but I always, but, but I always know that, you know, soon as Halloween, if like let's say we put it out on October 31st, soon as it's November 1st, everybody's turkey and and mm -hmm. Christmas, and it just it's done with. So, I thought, you know, why not give everybody almost an entire month to decorate, have Halloween, Halloween parties, and play our album instead of having it wasted at Christmas and Thanksgiving. So smart. So smart. Such a great time to to be releasing it. Because, I mean, people like, um, you know, horror music all throughout the year. But this time of year, people are really, really, everybody is digging into it, you know. So it's really, yeah. really smart to do it that way. And I'm assuming, obviously, you planned it that way. I know it's not always easy to plan the release dates. But since you uh, mixed in and recorded it, then you kind of had a little bit more um say is my assumption yeah they were uh they were really cool about you know about the release date they understood i'm like look we're a halloween band put it out at halloween and you'll get extra sales okay <laughs> yeah uh, definitely speaking of halloween um return to haddonfield i think is probably my favorite on the album it's the one that gets stuck in my head the most and i can't figure out if it gets stuck in my head the most because the Halloween franchise is my favorite and so it right. just is kind of a nostalgia thing or if it's just my favorite song because there's so many different styles of songs within um the album uh, yes. so it's hard because it's like oh I like this one for this reason and I like this one for this reason and this one like uh um uh, oh my gosh what's the title I just spaced it um the one right before it good day to be a bad guy Day, a good day to be a bad guy that one's more of like you know the traditional punk type of type yeah. of sound so it really goes all over the place which is really cool um which is something you're known for anyways um and I should have a question in there I'm just sitting here and telling you everything you already no, know I, about I, the I, album you know, <laughs> uh, no for for me I that's what I did with this when when I was trying to write you know coming up with ideas for songs for the record I basically this is the ninth album we've put out so I wanted to I I had you know because of COVID we had two years off I was able to go back and listen to all my albums again because like a lot of these records I've recorded and I really haven't listened to them once we went on tour like I don't listen to them the way I would listen to other other albums and uh so I just went back through them all and kind of went you know, what if we had a song uh, on the new album that was reminiscent of this song from this record? And Good Day to Be a Bad Guy. Okay, well, that sounds like something that would be on Murder Dolls or uh, my second album or something. And uh, and then Return to Haddonfield. That sounds like, you know, we, we always, almost on every one of my records, we have what I call my ballad kind of songs. Uh, and, and that would fit right in, into that category. Um, so yeah, I just kind of went back and listened to all my albums and said, what's my favorite song <laughs> on this release? And I went, well, okay, well, what if we wrote a, another song in that style, not, you know, ripping the song off, but like, so I think when older, when fans listen to this album and I think they're going to be reminded of a lot of older Wednesday 13 stuff, because that's where the recipe came from. That's cool. It's a smart way to do it. And then it makes it all cohesive, um, which it is anyways, but, uh, you know, even more so for, for older fans. Um, yeah. Speaking of ballad, um, the other side yes. um, is definitely the 
tearjerker of the album in a in a, an emotional, not terrifying way, right? Right, um, right. I'm I am sure there's a lot of reasons for that um, song. Is that one first of all one that you're planning on doing um, live? And second of all, if if you want to, it's okay if you don't. But if you want to go a little bit into what that song means to you and and where that song came from, um, I haven't really even th thought that far about how it, when when we'll play it or if we'll play it. Uh, there's usually every record we've ever released. There's always a song or two that doesn't get played or something. Uh, not that I don't like it. It's just doesn't fit the vibe of the of the show. Mm -hmm may fit the vibe of the record but not the show um that that song in particular uh you know it's it's like you said it's like a tearjerker if you know what the what it's about um but i didn't want to make it where it was just depressing like you know what i mean like i i, I feel like when you when you get done with that song it's 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 a positive mm -hmm. thing you know what i mean i didn't i didn't want to write anything too too sad about it uh although i i could have um you know and i told people that you know in the press on it that the record that that song was influenced by uh my mother passing away and and also uh joey jordison passing away but uh that was the two people i mentioned because of the two main people that uh but like i had so much happen like with death and stuff over the covid thing like i yeah. I lost my nephew. My uh, I lost uh, just a lot of tragedy happened within my family, and my buddy Alexi from Children of Bodom passed away. So it literally was, um, you know, it was a year and a half of just death that was really close to me. You know, I've had a lot of people pass away, but not people that that close to me. And uh, so, you know, when we're writing stuff for the record, we've got the music. R Ramon, our guitarist, brought that the music in and. I listened to it and I loved the music at first and I had a million different ideas for it. And then one day I just started, I'm like, well, maybe this will be the song I need to write about that. Cause it was, it's, you know, it's kind of like a therapy thing for me when I get to to write about uh, things like that. It's uh, it, it's definitely helpful. And, uh, and the reason I mentioned Joey Jordison in it is, you know, he's uh, so when fans can listen to this record, they can kind of, you know, because Joey was known all over the world. No one, no, no one knows my mom, you know, but like, uh, but Joey was loved and recognized all over the world. So I think when people listen to that, maybe they can get a little closure with, with that too. So, uh, so yeah, those songs are always difficult for me to write because it's literally getting me out of my shell and what I'm used to writing. And um those songs are the hardest to record but when i get done with them and i listen to them i'm I'm happy that i did it and when i hear people give me compliments on it going wow that was you nailed it on that so mm -hmm. so yeah those those songs are the uh are the toughest ones to write personal ones i can write you a song about grave robin and zombies all day long <laughs> but, uh, when you gotta write about my emotions and stuff it's like a okay give me a minute tap into that extra layer yeah no it's a beautiful song and I agree it does have a positive um vibe to it even with the heaviness of it and um yeah. you know the collective grieving when it comes to someone you know big like Joey um I think is really uh wonderful to have something that you guys can collect of, that can kind of collectively connect everybody and and help through the process um but also individually as well because it's not specific as you had mentioned it's it's a lot of it can be for anybody, you know? And so, um, I, I do want to go back and say, I, I'm so sorry that you went through, through all of that. Um, I'm a therapist. That's a lot to go through all in a short period of time while yeah. dealing with the collectiveness of COVID that pretty much just, you know, tore the world down and your personal world's tearing down. I'm, I'm really sorry that you went through that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I survived. Luckily I have, a. Uh... You know, this this band and my fans and my friends and my family have, you know, they they saved me. So and your fan base is dedicated. You have a really incredible fan base. Yes, they are diehards. They they're not there just for one record. They're there for the long haul. And, and uh, that's they're the reason I'm able to do what I do. Yeah, which is super awesome. Um, So let's uh, yeah, bring it back to the album. Um. <laughs> Are there any that 
I, I'm always curious um, with live shows. You guys have a, a pretty fun live show. You know, you guys are entertainers, um, which not all bands necessarily add that to their their shows or are able to entertain. You know, you could tell that they're a little bit more awkward let, instead of more right. free. Um, are there any on this album that you are nervous about doing live? Um, right now we're playing three, uh, during this tour, we're playing three of the new songs. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't nervous about playing. I'm, I'm excited to play them. They, uh, you know, anytime a band, you know, that's been playing and doing tours and shows as long as us and playing the same songs over and over when All you right. can, when you get a couple of new songs to throw in the set and, uh it just it feels good but it's even a better reaction when you throw a new song in and the crowd instantly uh loves it like we've been testing out good day to be a bad guy every day on this tour and by the time it's the middle of the song everybody knows the chorus and they're singing it as if <laughs> they knew it from years ago so uh so that's always a lot of fun to test out so i'm excited to play a lot of these songs on the on the record uh we just can't play them all because then we won't be able to do the rest of the catalog it's just every time you put the record out it's like so hard to make a set list i think our set list right now is the is a 20 song set list which is the longest yeah. amount of songs we've had uh so if you're coming out to this tour you'll get a you'll get a good a good show i'll have to look and see if you guys are coming out this way i i haven't seen anything yet but i might i haven't been as good about getting out as i was <laughs> as i used to be right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I'll have to look and see um yeah I, I just always get curious because I know um yeah sometimes with newer songs it's there's a little bit of of anxiety there so you're doing that one are you doing the two releases that you've already released as well or are they two different songs that you're doing on your on your set list uh we're doing the basically the video uh singles right now so right mm -hmm. now we're playing uh hideous insides out and good day to be a bad guy and that video and single will be out just a couple of days for the album comes out so. oh cool so that's going to be your third video release now those are three totally different songs so that's that's really cool that you picked those three well i thought that was you know again i overthink all these things the sound the the layout of the the lyrics i mean the layout of the 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 track listing on the album, the way it starts, the way it ends, um, you know, and I always try to think about the singles. I'm like, all right, well, let's put out Hideous for Hideous, I think will capture the old school fans that like the more catchy sing along Wednesday 13 stuff. And then Inside's Out for anybody that like the heavier stuff or don't even know what to expect. That song was just a sledgehammer. Uh, and I thought that would be fun. And then I thought if, I could look at the opinions of those two songs. And so far, the moral majority, it seems like everybody likes both songs. Definitely. I like the best, but I think Good Day to Be a Bad Guy is going to come in and clean the house on it and go, yes, this is. <laughs> this, and I mean, I, I can't, I, I don't think I've wrote a more perfect Wednesday 13 song in a long time other since that song. That song is everything that, that I think people have, learned and loved about me in the beginning because it's uh -huh. a little bit murder dolls it's it's me it's exactly me it's the sarcasm level is up to 10 i think i see the f word in it i don't know 20 times in the song so it's pretty good it's a great song it was the first one that i was like i actually wrote down okay this one's my favorite because i always like to go yeah. and try to pick out favorites and then the more i listened to it the more other ones were coming up and i was like okay well maybe you can't pick a favorite but haddonfield was the one that just kept repeating in my head so <laughs> it's like maybe that one is but i thought it was really cool that you did a song about christine i just barely revisited that movie i think it was last month for the first time since i was a kid right right yeah, I've uh, that was on my bucket list of movies to write about, and uh, you know what better weird thing to write about than a killer car with no driver, um, uh, and uh, and the music of that too. I I wanted it to sound like the engine of the car just only <laughs> running down the road. So when you hear that song, you can just it's like the very beginning. You just hear it start up, and it's just go. And uh, I've loved that movie since I was a kid. Uh, and I don't know why, but during the COVID thing, I probably watched it once a week. Oh, really? I was just on. I watched, I watched a bunch of movies over and over again. I think I watched that. 
and uh, Stephen King's uh, Dead Zone movie. I watched that probably 15 times. So you'll get a Dead I've Zone song on the next one. So. Oh, yeah, good, good. Yeah, it really, uh, um, Christine really uh, stands the test of time. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to because it had just been so long since I watched it. I remember liked it, liking it when I was younger, but um, I don't I think I've ever seen The Dead Zone. And I love the actor. I love the kid. Uh, the 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 actor. I can't think of his name right now. I know it. Um, I don't know if I know. Doing so wrong, but yeah, I, uh, I the kid that I, owns the car. Yeah, the guy that yeah. runs the car. Uh, he's in all of my other favorite eighties movies. Uh, uh, Gordon Keith Gordon's his name. Yeah. He what was else was he in? Keith Gordon. He was. Oh, he's in Jaws two. Oh. He's in. He's in Back to School. He's Rodney Dangerfield's son. Uh, he was in the legend of Billy Jean. He's one of the people of that. Uh, he was in a movie called combat Academy, uh, Christine. Um, and now he's a, I think he's an actual horror movie director now. I don't oh, know that's cool. Does, but, uh, so yeah, he's always been one of my favorite eighties guys. Anything he was in, I watched and Christine was the first like horror thing that he had done next to Jaws. Gosh. Yeah. I, I know I've seen Jaws too, but I haven't seen that in a long time. I've seen, the first Jaws a million times, but I'll have to go back and revisit that one too. What? So do you don't just watch horror? <laughs> no, no, no. I watch. I mean, I probably watch more comedy than than anything. But I. But I. The thing is, I only watch old stuff. Like I don't watch new movies. I have yeah. a hard time watching new stuff. But I watch. Uh, you know, I really watch old old stuff all the time. It still it never gets old to me. I watch old classic TV. Andy Griffith, Leave It the Beaver. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's just my world. Oh, that's a good balance. Those are feel good shows. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, what are some of your favorite comedies? Uh, my favorite comedies of all time are uh, Airplane. Oh yeah. The Jerk. Uh, <laughs> those were two of the first one. I remember seeing those at an early age. You like uh, really dry humor. Ah, uh, yeah. Those those are my two two of my favorites. Uh, I guess Raisin, not dry, silly. Raising Ari Raising Arizona, oh, Nick so Cage. Um, God, there's there's a lot. I mean, like I said, there's my I have my list of of comedy movies, just like my list of favorite horror movies. That's you know? cool. Well, I'm sure you get asked about horror movies all the time. So when you said you liked comedy, I thought oh, I'll I'll switch it up and go to that instead yeah. of asking your favorite yes. horror because I'm sure that's you've been asked that probably fifty thousand times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cool. Um. So, uh, do you have um a movie in mind or a TV show or something that you would create yourself that you would want to do like a soundtrack to? I would love to do my own movie and do my own soundtrack for it. Uh, if someone offered me to do soundtrack for a movie or something, I would be interested, but I'd rather, you know, and that's on my list of things to do as well as to, as to make a movie and, and, uh, and, and make a soundtrack. I mean, that's what a music video is the short, really short movie. So mm -hmm. if I can make an interesting four minute video, I can maybe make an interesting 90 minute video and I, uh, and put all the music to it. So, I mean, that's what I've grew up. It's all I know. So it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's when it happens, I don't know, but it's definitely going to happen eventually. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Your videos are terrifying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I love I love horror. I love horror. And I'm like, man, these are messing me up. I'm gonna have to watch some like happy good, stuff before good. bed. <laughs> good. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mission accomplished. Um, so do you know what kind of if you or when, not if, when you end up doing that, do you know what kind of uh horror you would want to um to do? It's probably gonna be more in the lines of what our most recent video is it's going to be creepy dark i mean there, it's either going to be one or two way i want to make it extremely disturbing or extremely ridiculous like over the top uh almost comedy horror like plastic so it kind of it could go it could go both both ways um, yeah. so so yeah, I and and the idea I would love to do both. I would love to do a serious, and I'd love to do a over the top, like tech, like Toxic Avenger style, weird, just dumb. You do the fun. opposite 
of the Evil Dead franchise and do like the funny one first and then do the terrifying one second and have it be like a sequel so people will go into it thinking it's going to be funny okay. and then just be terrified. There you go. <laughs> yeah, throw people off, right? That's... It's hard to with horror anymore. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm not really up to date on all the latest new horror stuff. I just got bored with it. So, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to do something new and exciting and get me excited about it again. Did you see Oculus? Nope, I didn't. I I literally, I, I don't watch anything new. It's like, uh, and I also am so busy. Like if I, if I sit yeah. down and watch me, it's usually Andy Griffith. Yeah, a comfort show or or movie. Yeah. Well, I if you have cops. time, what's that? I love cops. I watch cops all the time. Cops. Oh my gosh, is that even still on? I guess it is. Yes, every Saturday, Friday, Saturday. That's my that's my weekend. Are they still new episodes? There's cops, and there's a new show called On Patrol Live that's even <laughs> super cops. It's like live cops. That's I don't even know that was still going. Let's talk about the Patreon page because that's um, something I think is really important for people to know about. Mm -hmm. You do a lot on there. Do you do Twitch as well? I don't do Twitch. Uh, I just do my Patreon and most of that's ran off of, uh, you know, Patreon sort of like the home page, but I do all my stuff on Instagram. I have like a private Instagram for my fans. So every week I do like a uh, like a hour long, I call it Wednesday on Wednesday. Uh, and just kind of, they get the inside scoop. My, my fan club got to watch me make this entire album. They saw it from scratch. They saw us yeah. writing it from the demos. They got to see us record it. So, um, so if you were a part of my Patreon over the last year, you, you got to be a part of it. And I put, uh, I put a lot of the fan club members names and in, in the record as well. So, oh, that's uh, cool. So yeah, so a lot of the fans that got to see that, they, it's, I, I've never been able to do that before. I've always shared stuff from the studio, but they got to actually watch and see it be created. Right, be along for the uh, whole process. So yeah, so I still have that. I uh, and that's uh, I don't have the address for it, but it's on my uh, it's on my official Wednesday Thirteen page, and um, yeah, and when I get on tour, I'm more active with it because I'm with the band, so you get to see like live clips uh, from the bus us doing our makeup getting dressed uh all kinds of fun stuff you know that's I, don't so give, cool. I don't give all the good stuff away on the free social media so. yeah no that's good that's smart and um why is that so important for you to um include i think i think that's one good thing about the internet and social media in general is uh, being able to have those closer interactions, which wasn't a thing when when I was a kid, and I think we're probably close to the same age. So when you were as well, um, so why do you feel like that's so important to do? Because you do put a lot of time and effort into that. Well, if you want to keep your fans and keep them close and and keep them there forever, you you have to do a little more work than what it used to be done before. You know, so. Um, you know, like I said, I was able with this Patreon club, I was able to bring in, you know, four or 500 of my closest fans and I got to know them. I know their names. I know their screen names. They got to know a little bit about me. They get to see me not in full makeup. They get to see me at my home. They, so I got to be a, you know, they got to see who I am behind the the makeup and the, and the records. Um, and I've made even I think I've made them even more fans by by that. So it's super important because at the end of the day, I mean, that's the people that are coming to see you as your fans. So if you can make them happy on every level, you know, before they get to your show, I mean, you, you can't go wrong with that. Do you ever feel exhausted by trying to do all that? Do what? Do you ever feel exhausted by trying to do all that? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. uh. I did a lot of work this summer. I was doing eight to 10 hours a day of, at one point of, of working on the fan club and, you know, I was making good money, but I was also working 10 to 12 hours a day. So I've, I've definitely dialed it back a bit where it's more uh, workable, where I can still have a life and do a show and, and do all that. But, uh, but no, I, I don't regret anything I've did with it. It was a cool thing. And uh, you know, I got to get to know a lot of my super fans like up close that's awesome what are some things that you do for self-care 
for self care for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I mean, music. Yeah. Right. <laughs> music. Okay. Music is is my uh, is 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 my uh, savior of everything. Yeah. And uh, that's why when I didn't have that live outlet there for two years, it was a little a little odd but uh but i'm on tour now and uh i'll be on tour for the next 12 weeks so I'm awesome. In my space. awesome what are some things that you're listening to right now while you're while you're doing the tour nothing new uh i have playlists i make on my spotify of old 70s early 80s uh country and rock music <laughs> um so yeah, I just I I love Eddie Money. I listen to Eddie Money probably almost every other day. Huey Lewis in the news, ah. Kiss, Wasp. It's all the old. I mean, everything I grew up listening to, I I I still listen to it. Not a not a big fan of of newer bands. There's a lot of cool stuff out, but nothing just moves me the way it, it used to. I'm the newest thing I listen to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? I still listen to a lot of music I grew up with too, but um, being in this position, I I definitely do hear a lot of the newer stuff, and actually have um, found some really really cool bands along the way. But I I like to go back to to my roots as well. Right. Yep. Yep. Um. Cool. I don't want to keep you, and I can't think of any other specific questions that I had for you. Well, it's probably perfect timing because I just noticed I don't have my uh, laptop charged and it's giving me the the blinking. It's about to go to sleep mode. Oh well, <laughs> so, it's probably no. good timing. Period, because you've been going nonstop for the last yeah. two hours. So yeah, I appreciate yeah. you taking the time for me very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, and I hope that the tour goes wonderful and the release is amazing. I'm excited for everybody else to hear it. And um, hopefully I'll be able to see you out on the road. I'll, I'll have to look and see if you're coming this way. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you for having me. Yep. All right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.